Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Piccadilly Sidings. Now, there's been a few things happen on the layout over the last past week, although I've been concentrating more on the end gauge, but I'll just bring you up to speed and I'll show you what I've been doing. Now, this video is called Water, Point Control and Ballast. So let's have a look. Now, first of all, we've got some water. What do you mean water? No, it's not the, it's not the lake down by the viaduct. It's one of those. Yes, it's one of those, the Dapol motorised water tower. And the reason for that is because I'm turning this particular track into some kind of service area and a head shunt at the same time. So I thought, when I first saw it come out, I thought, oh, that would be absolutely perfect. It took two days to fit up the 12 volt bus wire which runs underneath. It also controls the fire at the other end, which we'll look at again in a minute and also an isolator switch, which is just there. So I got it all working, got everything absolutely perfect, and it sounds great, I love it. And you can see I've painted it all up, found some pictures on the internet, and, and just copied, basically. I found a pretty much exactly this, all, all by a few details different. And then an hour later, the email from Hattons comes through about the general product recall. So I get on to them, explain the situation, and say to them, can I send it back when the new one comes out? And they said, yeah, that should be all right. So that's what I'm going to do. And I will send it back. I have um, undone it, as you can see. It's all to do with an electro electrostatic capacitor, apparently, what Jenny was telling us, inside here. And if you use them above anything above 10 volts, they can go bang. And they put up with it for a little while and they go bang in a big way and apparently they just explode so i don't want that happening as i've spent a long time doing this and particularly as it's next to this <laughs> if you saw my video on making this and also the viaduct at the other end you can appreciate i don't want to end to do that again it took me eight days to do both of those so hopefully that should be absolutely fine and apple can get that sorted Anyway, let's move over and look. I've at some now fitted a uh, coal bunker, and that is a Wills kit. Yes, I probably could have made it to be honest, but uh, I just felt like doing <laughs> making a kit to be honest, and it was only a th five or six quid if that. But uh, I've put real coal on the top, so hence that, and then just going back over to the campsite and the fire as I showed you in the last video. Now it does come out quite um, bright and vivid on the camera. It's a very bright orange down here on the camera and it's all blurring together. In reality, it doesn't look like that at all. You've got, it's quite, if I pardon why I was saying it, it's quite a nice glow really, quite a fiery glow. Now you can see I've put a tent. It's an old fashioned triangular prism type tent which has caught fire and the the occupiers are over there on the bridge having a tiff but you can also see there are some bits down here I've got a couple of towels there's a ball a couple of bags which are made from um, uh, white tack I think that was there's a couple of plates there and Jack did mention about making a barbecue and I am in the process of doing that it is quite tricky in this size, as you can appreciate. So that will take a little while. When I get round to doing it again, I will hopefully try and put that barbecue on. So that will be next. Okay, right, on to the ballasting, which you'll probably notice I haven't done yet. So that will be coming in a bit. Now, the point rodding. Now, it isn't, um, how am I gonna say this, exact. It is my interpretation of point rodding, okay? This is how I've done it, and this is what I'm choosing to do. Now, what did I do? If I can take you in, I'll try and zoom in a bit as well, so you can hopefully see, or oh, we're going all out of focus. There you go. Now, what I've done then is I've made um, some l shape parts, and obviously I've got the wire. Now, the l shape part sort of links up with the end of the point rod, the tie bar, okay? Obviously it doesn't move, it's static. 
Now, if you remember, um, on the actual point rodding itself, I, I mentioned these uh, sort of levers. So when the point, is, when the lever is pushed that way, the whole thing will then turn and then push that rod that way. And that is made out of this. Just common or garden angle. And that is uh, five mil in diameter or five mil wide. And it's obviously a five mil square, if you like. So all I did was then just put it onto the board. I'm not going to actually cut this off, but then just cut off the tiniest of slithers, probably around about two mil, mil and a half, something like that. And then mounted it on its side and I literally just glued it down because we're talking details here, which are so fine and fiddly. Now, what I did then was I cut some N-gauge sleepers, probably around about four mil thick or four mil wide and glued those to the board and then varnished over the top. And I mean with acrylic varnish and I gave them a couple of coats. And because obviously when I do ballast, I don't want all this floating away as it probably would. So that's been sealed down. Now, the grippers for the actual um, wire itself are the actual chairs from the end gauge track. Right, what so, you see here, obviously, um, I'm using a little file to point, but this is end gauge track. And this is what I made, but out of that. And then taking some wire 0.2 gauge wire that type of thing and then obviously in the in this version but then just mounted that inside the track inside the chairs but when it's in there it does look a lot more sort of compact and snug okay so i'll just take you up now and you can have a little look at that but please bear in mind it's my representation of it um, i'm having to watch the pennies um, a little bit. I have, I did have a little bit of money come through and managed to buy a few things which I'll show you over a period of time. Um, let's take a look. So I'll just go slowly. Footbridge is coming. There's the footbridge. And to go over the lamp, forgive me. <laughs> so I've literally just gone all the way up. And then we've got the point coming in. So there's another piece coming off for the new point just here. That then goes up and crosses with two levers either side. And then the two parts go up side, side by side up there. And if I tilt you down, you might notice the point joins on as well. So you've got three rods running at the same place. I'll show you that at the other side. Going around the back into the fiddle yard area. And then hopefully there you can see the three rods that side. Now, like I said to you, it's it's my interpretation of point rodding. You you may decide to buy the kit. I have to choose what to spend the money on. Now, I've made these levers and there is another one just there. Okay, now I will go and show you how I made these. Because um, I'll be honest, I'm quite happy with the way they've come out. I um, I looked on the internet and just found pictures and just copied the idea. So I'll go and show you how I did that. Although I won't be making another one, I'll just show you on a drawing. Okay then, so moving on to the actual frame arms themselves for the um, point control. I cut out a piece of plastic card, and I'm drawing this in 3D by the way which was 12 millimetres by eight millimetres. Okay. Something like that. And then using a piece of this channel, it's coming into shot, coming into shot. There it is, there. Piece of channel, which is, if I remember this, five millimetres no, four millimetres across that way. And then again, I just cut off the finest little bit off the end and ended up with a piece that then I glued down onto that little piece of rectangular plastic card that I've just done. All right. 
Now this next bit is fiddly, but then take a piece of N-gauge um, sleeper, which I'll draw big so you can see. And what I did then was cut off an angle. So I'm left with this bit, okay? Of which I then cut back to around about three millimeters, give or take, all right? So I'm left with a tiny block and then I glue that in there like that, hoping that makes sense. Then taking another piece of the channel like that, I then glue that to this point. So I'm now sandwiching in this block that I've just cut, like so. Now, once you've done that, um, leave that to dry and go off for at least an hour, two hours. Then the next bit. Now, what I actually did was I took a piece of plastic card and I cut it to about a millimetre wide. Just move that over that way. And then I literally just bent the end over so it sort of angles itself like that. Painted this, I mean, mine was a bit dirty, so I painted this white and I painted that bit black. All right. But having caught one of the frames and broke it off and having to glue it back on again, that's not a nice experience. So you could, if you want to, take a piece of wire and then bend that at the top, paint it white and then black, and then glue that In position and then onto the ballasting now i appreciate there are a million and one ballasting videos out there so this is not going to be a how-to it's more of this is how i'm just going to do it and you just get a flavor of it really not an in-depth like i'd normally do so anyway i've removed the viaduct i'll do that separately because i think i don't want that sticking obviously and i've also removed the dapol water tower there um I know it's a temporary arrangement, but I don't want that sticking down either. So when it comes to this area, there's going to be a dearth of ballast. I might just leave this section completely. Um, in fact, I might only ballast up to, um, I don't know, I might do the middle of the track and then we can soon um, adjust it afterwards, can't we, when the new one comes eventually. All right, so anyway, the ballast I'm actually going to use the main ballast is going to be this Jarvis, okay? We'll see how much we've got, this extra fine chippings, which is the same stuff as that. But I've also got, when I bought, um, when I went to Worley, I bought the sample packs of Scenic stuff. There was a bag of, um, two bags of this, um, one per year, by the way, <laughs> there's only one bag in it, um, of medium ballast, but, which would imply that the chippings are bigger. But when you look at the size, it doesn't appear to be a lot different. Um, the colour's very different. This is obviously more greeny grey, and this is more, well, whitey grey, if you like, with, with different colours in it. So I could use, I might use a bit of both, and we'll see. It will be all weathered down anyway, but um, we'll take it one step at a time. So join me a minute, and I'll show you roughly how I'm gonna put it on. Okay, what I forgot to tell you is, um, I'm gonna be struggling with the amount I've got here. Uh, that's the Jarvis stuff, which isn't an awful lot, and I've only got the two bags of the, the Backman stuff. So I'm going to mix in a load of sand, and that will be absolutely fine. So I'm going to mix that up, and I'll right, come there back. There we to go. You. That's my mix. Now, it will be weathered down, so I'm really not that worried. Um, so I'll start putting it on. Now, I'm not going to do a lot, but uh, the method I use is basically with a teaspoon... And less is more. I mean, I want enough, obviously, but in the early stages, just put on a little bit because you can add more. It's a lot harder to take it off, as you can appreciate. It's the bulk. Getting it clear from the inside of the rails, inside those frog rails and the check rails. We don't want any in there. But just gently, gently, gently. What's that phrase? Um, 
Something, something, catchy monkey. Slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. It's a bit of that, really. All right, anyway, you're getting the idea, and that's coming together already. Like that. Spoon, you've seen other people do this. Just tap the rail, which causes the ballast to dance, and then hopefully jump off the sleepers. Anyway, the point, just really briefly, again, it's very slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. Um, just ease it up to the tie bar, either side, trying to keep sand away from that rod there. So again, it's just, just really, really take it very, very slowly. Well, there you go, the typical mix of 50-50 uh, PVA and water and a little bit of detergent as well but it wouldn't be me if I didn't do it slightly differently would it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some acrylic paint yes I am so a little bad little dab of raw umber give that a bit of a mix and the idea of this is to color different tracks or different parts of the layout with the color and that will just take the immediate um, glare off it. I mean, if I look at that track there, that looks horrifically bright. For this period of the, of, um, the layout, now I'll put a bit more in that, um, it just looks far too bright. So anyway, I'm going to get that um, mixed up because I think that's going to take a few minutes and um, hopefully it will come out a reasonably darkish colour which we'll um, look at in a minute. Right, there we go. Now, what I did forget to say was I've um, gone over the, the top of this with a truck just to make sure that everything runs properly and um, I've got rid of all the, the ballast from around the edges of the track. But again, if, if I need to chop any bits out or you know, loosen any loose bits of ballast, then you know, it's not the end of the world, is it? Anyway, that's about as dark as I can get it. So without adding huge amounts of paint. So I'm literally just... Now, again, some people squirt it with um, IPA, some people squirt it with water. I tend not to do that. Um, and the reason for that is because, me personally, if I squirt it with water, that weakens the glue even more and it'll take longer to dry. I've got washing up liquid in it. It's got, you know, um, so it will, it will go round and disperse itself. So I'm really not that worried. So as everybody else does, I'm literally just going to squirt it into the track. This is not any different from anybody else. It's literally just not rocket science. So again, I'll just show you a little bit more just so you can get all excited about it. <laughs> we all get excited about watching people put glue on, don't we? <laughs> I'm watching glue dry <laughs> anyway now I've put an amount of raw umber into this particular track what I'm going to do after this is add some burnt umber and then go over this track and the siding down here and then when I get into this bit up here the bit going off to the right hand tunnel I'll put a lot of black in that and darken it down. I will be weathering it with a wet, an airbrush. So I'm again, I'm really not that worried, but I'll show you again, all of this at the end. Speaks. There you go then. So that's all the ballasting done. I uh, did what Tim did down there and put a piece of track in and then lifted it out. So you left with the impressions of the, the marks from the sleepers. I've put some spare sleepers in. I've taken the bridge out. That still needs to be ballasted, but I'll do that then. Um, still need to do this area here with um, that lifting out type method, but I thought I'll leave that for now. I just wanted to get the bulk of it done so I can touch up these odd areas. But hopefully you can see the difference that the paint makes. Just by putting the paint in the mix, you get an instant kind of weathering effect. So any other weathering going on the top will be a lot easier because you've got dual ballast in the first place. Um, I have to say, I used this Woodland Scenics ballast, an absolute nightmare. It really was. Um, I never wet the tracks before I ballast. 
I put a washing up liquid into the glue mix, I put paint into the glue mix, and I've never had to wet the tracks in N-Gage at all, ever. And when I use this stuff, um, proper ballast with N-Gage, so I normally use sand, um, I never have any issues. I didn't have any issues with this Jarvis stuff down here either. But that Woodland Scenic stuff, it's, well, I won't buy that <laughs> anymore if I can help it. You might find it all right, but I mean, I'm looking at that and thinking it's not even dulled down, you know, whereas the the um, the Jarvis stuff has for some reason or another. But anyway, that's the way it is. But it's a bit of a soppy mess at the minute. So that I'll obviously I'll show you that again next time. All right. Anyway, the top video will be how I made the fire which is over there and not on at the moment and the bottom video will be the previous one to that which i think was making the bridges if i'm correct but it will be the last two videos that before this one anyway all right anyway take care of yourself and i'll see you again next time bye for now